to recognize. Mr. President, this amendment is pretty simple. It says that American taxpayers should not be put on the hook for states which have been profligate. It says specifically that federal funds cannot be used to purchase obligations of states or local communities that are in default or about to default, unless those states have gone through some sort of crisis like the Katrina situation. But if the default that the state or the local community is about to experience is a function of their failure to discipline their fiscal house, then we're not going to ask the taxpayers across this country to support that error in judgment and that misguided fiscal policy of that state or that local government. If we don't have this type of rule in place, basically we will be setting a situation where the American people will become the guarantor of inappropriate action across this country by legislators and city governments. And you'll have this, excuse me, untoward situation. That, could you take where you will basically create a, an atmosphere where there is an incentive for state governments and local communities to not be fiscally responsible. It's this moral hazard issue. We debated it at considerable length when we discussed too big to fail in the banking system. And this bill has a lot of issues as far as I'm concerned, but one of the things it actually handles reasonably well is the issue of too big to fail. It does need some adjustment, but it, it basically handles that issue pretty well. And we have designed language in this bill between Senator Dodd and Senator Shelby, which essentially says no longer will the American taxpayer be presumed or in any way expected or have any obligation at all to support a financial institution which has gotten too large and has taken on too many risky decisions and is therefore in fiscal distress. That institution will fail. Its stockholders will be wiped out, unsecured bondholders will be wiped out, and the American taxpayer will not come in and defend that situation. Too big to fail ends with this bill, hopefully. But it should apply also to states and local governments. We should not create the moral hazard of having taxpayers in New Hampshire or taxpayers in Nebraska or taxpayers in New Mexico responsible for profligate activity in other states. And in fact, many of our states, of course, have balanced budget requirements. In fact, in Nebraska, they don't even allow any debt, period. They have a constitutional amendment that says there can be no debt. So they are extremely disciplined, these states, in the way they handle their budgets. And the taxpayers and the citizens of those states expect their leaders to be disciplined. So how can we ask those ta taxpayers and those citizens in those states who have been disciplined, who have elected people who are willing to live within their means as they govern, whether it's at the community level or at the state level, how can we ask those citizens across this country to go in and bail out other states and other communities who have been totally undisciplined in managing their fiscal house and have put themselves in huge distress and have defaulted on their debt or are about to default on their debt? This isn't acceptable. If we're going to have a bill which addresses the issue of too big to fail, it should apply to this type of a situation. And so I've offered this amendment. Very simple, as I said. It prohibits federal fund funds from being used to purchase or guarantee obligations of states and local communities that are in default or about to go into default. Pretty strict standard, pretty clear. If you've got a state that, for reasons of its own making, has created a fiscal mess of inordinate proportions and can't pay its debts, it can't come to Washington and say, we want you to bail us out. That's not right. It's not appropriate. And so this bill bans that sort of, a, sort of an event from occurring. And why do we need to do this? <coughs> it's pretty obvious, isn't it? I mean, there are a couple states in this country who have been irresponsible in their spending, who have not disciplined themselves, and who I think are expecting everybody else in this country to bail them out. <laughs> and I sure don't want to be part of that. And I don't want my taxpayers in New Hampshire to be part of that. And it's not fair that they should be part of that. 
those states are going to have to figure out how to straighten out their own fiscal house. And they should have to do that within the terms of their own spending streams and their own revenue streams. And they shouldn't expect the federal government to come in and take them out of their distress, which was self-imposed and self-created. There is uh, an exception in this bill, this language, so that if a state is put in severe distress because of an emergency situation, such as a Katrina-type situation, this would not apply. Obviously, it shouldn't apply then. But if it's a self-imposed event, simply resulting from the human nature of legislators and city councils to sometimes spend a heck of a lot more money than they have and then they can take in under their structure, then they should have to pay for it and figure out how to deal with it themselves and they shouldn't pass that problem on the American people by financing it through here, through Washington. So it's consistent with the theme of this bill that there should be nothing that's too big to fail in this country, uh, including state governments and local governments. Uh, or financial institutions. And I would hope that my colleagues would support this amendment. At this point, I would reserve the balance of my time and yield the floor.